Hello and welcome. So today I'm going to quickly talk about mods and add-ons which are available for FSX. Because FSX is such a vast game, there's lots of things available for it. So let's have a quick look at some of the things that you can get. So a few rough categories include aircraft, environmental mods, tools, utilities and hardware. And within these categories you have many options. So why would you want to mod or get add-ons for FSX? Well simply, it improves your experience within the flight simulator and this can be done in many ways. First, let's look at aircraft. There are probably thousands of planes available for FSX. The majority of them are freeware, aircraft which are free to download and use. Sounds like a great deal, right? Well, not always. While it's fantastic to see such a wide variety of free aircraft available, you need to be aware that these planes may not be accurate to the real plane. For example, the handling characteristics might not be correct. That said, there are some fantastic and highly rated free planes out there, so if you want to expand your collection, I would certainly recommend seeking those out. As for paid aircraft, what benefits do these offer? Well, quite a lot as it turns out. Generally, paid aircraft are very polished. The models of the aircraft are accurate to the smallest detail. Not only that, but the company who has developed it has most likely worked very closely with the aircraft manufacturer to make sure that their aircraft is an accurate reflection of the real thing from the way it flies, all the way down to each of the systems in the aircraft. Let me show you an example. So here we have the default Cessna 172 in FSX, and having a quick look at the plane. You can see that if you look especially at the tires, you can see that the tires seem to be receding into the ground a little bit, which looks a bit sloppy. And also if you notice the textures towards the back of the plane, they also look like they start to fade out a little bit. Now let's look at an add-on plane that's available to buy. This is a Cessna 172 from A2A Simulations. Looking at the model, you can see it looks ever so slightly different. You know, the windscreen is proportioned slightly different to the default plane. You can see the wheels are sitting on the tarmac as they should be. Um, you can see more detail across the tops of the wings as well. So, looking at this one, you can see it just looks a bit, little bit sharper, a little bit cleaner, and the textures on it look much better. Having a look inside the cockpit, you'll see a very big difference here. When we have a close look at the instruments in the default plane, you can see that they start to get a little fuzzy. The quality isn't the best, and you can see the dials don't have a smooth animation. They, when they move slowly especially, it looks like the needles tend to kind of jump a little bit, if that makes sense. In the A2A Cessna, a close look reveals that the dials are true 3D. The graphics look much clearer, and you can see that the movement on the dials is much smoother. Also, there are many more things to interact with in the A2A version. Looking at the radio stack in the FSX version here, we can see that we can change the frequencies by clicking on the numbers, but some of these extra buttons don't really serve any purpose. In the A to A plane, we can turn individual parts of the stack on and off, we can adjust the frequencies by clicking the dials, and we can use more buttons so it's a much more realistic representation of the radio systems. Let's look at the handling quickly as well. So I'm going to do a level turn, and I want you to pay close attention to the turn coordinator. So we're in the FSX Cessna just now, and when we begin the turn, you'll see that the ball doesn't really move that much as we roll into the turn. Now when we jump into the A2A Cessna, have a look at that again. You'll see as we roll into the turn, that you'll see the ball is moving much more, and that means that I need to put some a bit more effort into uh, making sure that I do a coordinated turn properly. One more benefit of paid aircraft is that you can get cool extras with some of them. For example, A2A wanted to make their plane a plane that you could study with, so they have a couple of cool features such as built-in checklists, and even a walk-around tool where you can do some pre-flight checks, making sure that the plane is in good working order before flying. Of course, this is just one example of a payware aircraft. There are many more companies out there who have developed similar aircraft, ranging from small propeller planes like this all the way up to big jets. Moving on to environmental mods, again there's a plethora of add-ons out there. For the world, there's actually a couple of things that need explaining because scenery add-ons can be a bit confusing. So in FSX, there's actually three layers to the world that you can see. The first layer is commonly known as the mesh. This is the 3D model of the world. If you've heard of a wireframe model, then you'll understand this. The mesh is what gives the ground its shape. It's what allows mountains and cliffs to be seen as three-dimensional objects. 
The next layer is land class. This is an invisible layer, however it's very important for the next layer. Land class basically tells the simulator where things are. So if there's an airport at a particular location, land class tells the simulator where to draw the runway and the buildings, etc. If there's roads or bridges, land class tells the simulator where to draw them. And the final layer, which probably makes the most impact, is the texture layer. Think of this as the paint job that's applied to the mesh. This is what gives the land its colour and its detail. So all of these layers work together to give you the world that you see and fly in. There's mods for each of these layers and there's mods which change all of them in one go. The main benefit of doing this is to make the world look much more realistic. You'll find roads where they should be, coastlines look much more accurate and new textures make everything look very pretty. There's a couple of mods which are key to improving the environment within FSX and these are aimed at improving the weather and the clouds. So there's two areas to consider here. There's textures which change the appearance of clouds and there's also weather engines which are responsible for placing clouds in the correct locations along with providing accurate wind. So moving on to tools and utilities, you'll most likely be looking at things like flight planners, payload managers for things like balancing passengers and baggage and cargo. You'll probably find AI air traffic programs to increase the number of AI planes that you see as well, along with new air traffic control programs which give you a much more realistic ATC experience. Other important mods can improve the performance of the simulator. Sadly, FSX is an old game now and it's not really suited to modern computers. Even with a powerful computer, the game can struggle to run smoothly at times. There's two ways to combat this. The first is by using these programs, which enhance the performance in various ways. The other is by tweaking. So tweaking is when you manually edit configuration files and settings to find the best performance. If you search online, you'll find various guides on tweaking FSX. A couple of things to note, it's not an exact science. Tweaks which work for one person may not work for you, and there is a risk of breaking the game. It's not a major problem, you can simply reinstall it, however it can be a time consuming process. Recently though, FSX has been re-released on the Steam gaming platform and it has been tweaked by a professional company to resolve some of the performance issue from the original game. Perhaps you've already got the Steam edition of FSX, in which case you shouldn't really need to worry about performance issues. And lastly, you can buy hardware which is more suited to flight simming. So you've probably seen that not all aircraft are flown with a joystick. A lot use a control which looks similar to a steering wheel called a yoke. There are companies out there who have developed yoke systems specifically for flight simulators, along with throttle quadrants and pedal sets. Other hardware options include a HOTAS. Now, what the heck is a HOTAS, I hear you ask? HOTAS stands for Hands on Throttle and Stick, and it's inspired by a fighter jet control system. You'll generally find that they have a ton of buttons and switches available on both the joystick and the throttle lever. The idea being that you can pretty much control all of the plane's functions without removing your hands from either the throttle or the joystick. And lastly, we have the top end of the hardware spectrum. Some flight enthusiasts go as far as to build replica cockpits of aircraft. Of course, this is a very expensive option, but it will give you the most immersive experience you can imagine without actually flying a real plane. So that's a quick look at modding FSX. If you're interested, here's a list of mods and add-ons which I use at the moment. I don't know if these are the best mods, uh, I'm not a reviewer and I've not used any other products. So I would strongly recommend that you go out and look at various mods yourself before buying them. There's no best mods list out there, but if you start reading things that the flight sim community says, you'll start to notice what's popular and what's not. Anyway, in the next video we'll be looking at using the autopilot, which will be important for some upcoming videos where we learn some new navigation techniques. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.